So what we want to do is generate some code. Yeah. So how do we do that? Well, you got to make sure it's exporting to the right location. And by default, it goes to the NetBeans directory, which is good enough for what we want to do. And it'll just create a project named after your robot. Oh, notice also that if we wanted to make a C++ project, we're doing Java, but if we wanted to make C++, you'll notice it's all set up for the Wind River Workspace project. So you could export to that. Yeah. So let's export some Java. So we're going to export to Java. And that just tells us that it's successfully exported down here and it's done. And if, again, if we want to do C++, it's the same thing, except you click the C++ button instead of Java. So let's go to NetBeans and uh, grab the project. So we'll open the project up, and it's called GearsBot. There we go. And we'll download the project into the robot. So there it goes. It's, it's going into the robot. I guess they must be finished with it because we're downloading it yeah. into the robot. Wait, why are we downloading it? Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, we haven't really written any code yet. Um, this, is, this, is, this is a little strange that we're just downloading this. Um, I wonder what this is good for. Well, I hear there's this new test feature called Vive Window in the new release. Oh, yeah, test, test mode. In fact, if we look at the driver station right now, um, this is the 2013 driver station. Look, it's got teleop, autonomous, practice, and it's got this other button called test. This must be for testing the robot, which is kind of what we want to do right now. Yeah. Well, look, they just brought us the robot. So. We just downloaded the program into the robot while they were carrying it here. Yeah. So, now you should be able to see the robot in the camera. And if we go and open up the smart dashboard, and then we enable it in test mode. Whoa. Look at this. We have. We have a, a little box here for each of our subsystems, claw, drivetrain, wrist, and elevator. See, we didn't write any code, and these things just showed up here in the, in the uh, smart dashboard when it's in test mode. And in, inside of each one of those boxes, there's all of our actuators and our sensors. Like, there's the pot for the wrist, okay, 2.13, and there's the pot for the elevator. It's a 2.382. That's the voltage that the analog channel is reading for those potentiometers. And, you know... When we want to move the wrist in the elevator to specific positions, uh, we always have to write down those potentiometer values so we can make our code go there. But uh, it's always we have to write little test programs to do that and lots of print statements, but it's right here for us, and we haven't written a line of code yet. All right, let's test that they wired up all the motors properly. So okay, we'll just test the claw. Oh, there goes the claw. That's closed, and we can open it. Okay, that's pretty cool. And we've got the uh, wrist. Let's see if that works. Oh, that's going down. And let's make it go up. Okay, that's not bad. And you can see the pot value is changing while we're doing this. So if we make the elevator go up and down, um, we can see that the pot value changes as it goes up and down. So that's pretty nice. So we can find some positions for our challenge, which are to pick up uh, cylindrical objects off the floor and put them on top of these platforms. So uh, which one do you want to do first? All right, let's... Um, well, the wrist is horizontal. Let's start yeah. with that. Okay, so we're just going to write down the current set point of 2.2. Okay, so that's pretty good for the wrist being horizontal, 2.2. So I'm just going to write this on a piece of paper. And then let's make it vertical. All right, so we're going to get vertical. Okay, that's pretty good. What's the number? That is 4.25. 4.25, so that's our number for verticals. Those are the voltages from those pots. And now, I guess we want to make it uh, horizontal again because we want to check the elevator. So let's go yep. Let's go back down to 2. So we want to go to about 2.2. Or 2.2, yep. Okay, that's pretty good. And and now what we want to do is uh, have the elevator in two positions. So it's almost at the height of the box. Let's just... Uh, well, let's wait till we pick up the Okay, thing. let's pick up the... Cylindrical object. cylindrical object first. So let's bring this thing down to the ground, or down to the height where the cylindrical object is. How's that? That's, that's pretty good. Okay, so that is a 5.1. Okay, that's the bottom height. All right, let's just close the claw on it. Oh, wrong way. Okay, we got it. All right, so now we want to go up. Okay, and then down a little. Okay. Oh, and what's that value? I'm going to go a little above that. 
So like 1.8. Okay, so top 1.8. Okay, so we now got some values that we want to use for these things. And now, you know what's always a problem is, you know, you, you, have, this, you have these feedback things like the potentiometers on these, on these mechanisms, and now you want to use PID control, and you got to tune the PID system. And um, that's always a, kind of a problem because you have to write some code and test it and then type in the numbers. But look, in the elevator and the wrist, which are our two PID subsystems, there's a PID controller set of values that are ready to go. PID and app, which is feed forward that we use for velocity PID, and a, and a place to put in a set point. So we can tune the elevator right now and find the right value for it. All right, move the boxes away. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go to a set point of 2.5. I'm going to enable it. And if you notice, the uh, potentiometer doesn't quite get there. The P of 1 isn't enough to get to a set point. So if we make it like 10, and then we set a new set point of 3.5, you'll notice it gets there pretty good, but we could get there a little faster if we upped the P some more. So let's try going like up to 100. And we'll go to... Oh, what's it doing now? It's oscillating around the point. So we're uh, a little too high in the p-value. Why is it oscillating? Because it multiplies the error by 100. Here, let's, let's talk about p, the p a little more. Okay. So the p is the uh, proportional term. It's basically, a, it, this number gets multiplied by the error. And the error is the difference from where you are and where you want to be. So in this case, the set point is 1.5, and the actual place is 1.529. So the error is 0.029, which gets multiplied by 100, which is 2.9, which goes up to the motor. So the motor's going full speed in one direction. It oversuits, and then because the error becomes negative, it goes in the other direction. So we're going to try going down to 50, and we'll go to 3.5. Oh, oh, still oscillating. Still oscillating. That's a little hot on the high side. So let's go to, uh, let's try 20. Yeah, that was pretty good. It's, um, and it's within 0.002. So, so that's pretty close, huh? Yeah, so let's make that a p-value. So the p-value for the elevator will be uh, 20. 20. And... For now, it's not going to bother with I and D. Okay, and then, and then, yeah, I mean, you might want to do this on your robots with bigger motors. We have kind of small motors on this, so I think we can just get away with just a proportional uh, value. Yeah. All right, and then for the wrist, what do we use for the wrist? For the wrist? Well, let's see. Oh. Uh, oh, we need to give it a set point. That, that is necessary. So we're going to go to, uh, what did we find? What did we say was horizontal? The wrist horizontal was about 2.2. 2.2. Oh, we'll go to 2.5. Right now, again, it's not going there quite front. It's 2.3, so we're off by a bit. So we're going to go up bigger again. So let's try 10. Oh, 10 looks pretty good. Let's try, um, what was the vertical? Oh, vertical was 4.25. 4 4.2. Well, that oscillated a little, so let's go down. Uh, hmm. Let's try 5. And 4.2. Pretty good. 4.206. Yeah. It stopped really close. Yeah. So this is good. So we'll go with 5 for a p value. 4. Uh, okay. So for the wrist, I'm just going to write this down. It's 5. Okay. So that's pretty good. We've tuned the PID controllers. We've got some values to use for our two set points. And we and, know all the motors work. And we know that all the motors are working. And the sensors. And the sensors. Oh, and by the way, you know, we're just using this for setting up the robot right now. We haven't really written the program yet. We're getting ready to. But, you know, if you're in a competition and you come back off the field and uh, the driver says, oh, the elevator didn't work, then you can put the robot into live window mode just like this by clicking on the test button. And then back in the pits, you can test to make sure that all the mechanisms and all the sensors are working. So this is a pretty handy feature, not just for writing the program.